I want to continue advancing and that's what's good about the medical field. You're going to continue to learn things and you're going to want to pursue other areas. It's not so limited where you're just focusing on one aspect of it. There's so many different venues or different areas of interest that you can follow up with. Welcome to the Insider Career Conversations. I'm your host, Sylvia Juarez Magaña. As a higher ed advocate, it's become clear to me that not everyone is interested in a traditional degree path. As I started to talk to my colleagues, like my co-host, Brenda Castellanos-Nash, I learned there were careers that don't need an extended education path. As it turns out, there's a whole world of those unknown careers in need of more young and eager professionals. These jobs play a huge role in people's lives and are vital in their fields. On this show, we will explore these lesser known careers and what listeners need to know to get started in these different paths. We discuss things like schooling, licensing, a typical day, and what it takes to make it in the workforce. This season, we're focusing on jobs within the allied health sphere, the world Brenda operates in. Brenda, can you tell us a little bit about this week's career and who our guest is? Hi, Syl. Yes. Uh, Today, we're going to dive into the world of bone densitometry. And just a quick recap on what allied health is. It's basically a team of professionals that are involved with the delivery of health or related services involved in the identification, evaluation, and prevention of diseases and disorders. Some examples of allied health professionals include dental hygienists, ultrasound technologists, and respiratory therapists. So with that, I'd love to introduce our guest, Desiree. Oh, of course. Thank you, Brenda, for inviting me. Thank you, Sylvia, for inviting me. Desiree is actually the technologist that did my bone density scan last month. And as I was laying there getting scanned, I thought to myself, oh my God, she would be the perfect guest that we could have on the, this podcast and talk about her experience and career path. So we'd love to, you know, pick your brain and see, you know, what your story is and how and why did you choose this career and what led you to it? So a bone density, also known as a, a DEXA, is a machine and a test that helps measure uh, bone density. What we do is we screen different areas of the body uh, to screen for bone loss. Um, severe bone loss, mainly referred to as osteoporosis. So Desiree, I know that as our listeners are, you know, kind of taking in what you're saying, and we're, we're introducing this new world to them. I know that a person that's considering this particular career would need a high school diploma or a GED as a foundation for their uh, background, their education background. Uh, I do want to remind folks that this field does have a license in most states. So while we are in California, there are other parts of the country that have this particular um, uh, expertise and they do need licenses in most of these, uh, in most states. And because of the advancements, advancements and changes, individuals do need to continue their education. So why don't we start at the beginning? Why don't you tell us about the early years of Desiree? Let us know about the younger you. Um, I originally, you know, growing up, I was very interested in science. And I told my parents I always wanted something in marine biology, preferably. I wanted to work at SeaWorld mainly. Um, Who would? But as I got older and... I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Like a fun job, it right? looks like a fun um, job. <laughs> it does. But, but like Brenda said, um, I wanted something with job security. And the medical field is perfect. We have job security there, especially now with everything happening with the pandemic. But I knew I wanted something that did not involve blood. Unfortunately, I don't Mm -hmm. do well with that. And I wanted something more on the science side. So I wanted to go into imaging. I originally went to school for um, an x-ray license. That's where I started off with with just a plain x-ray license. And when I started at my former job, they recommended that I try getting a license with bone density. So that's how I started off with bone density. I love the fact that somebody recommended it to you and you looked into it because I know when I advise students, sometimes it's a hit or a miss, right? It's, are they going to take the advice? Right. And are they going to understand how to take the advice and all of that that comes with it? So why do you think it kind of landed on you the right way to move forward with it? I worked with a a nice group at the time and I knew it would be good for me, beneficial in the long run, having uh, something advance me in the medical field. 
Um, having more than one license obviously was a big plus for me. And the person who was giving me the advice was just really set on showing me how this would benefit me in the future. How old were you? Uh, 20, 24, 24. Okay. So was this like your second career? It was, yes. And I believe, Desiree, you mentioned that when we spoke, when I approached you about this, that this was like a program that you did. It was like a weekend course. If that's correct. Is that still the case now? Like, or has it changed since you did it? Sorry, I don't think we clarified when you did it, how many years ago you've been in the field. Uh, density. I've been in the field now nine years, I want to say nine years. Um, when I did go to school, um, it was a weekend course in Oakland. Um, it was offered by a foundation that uh, leads a lot of research in osteoporosis. They have a research center in Oakland. And at the time they were offering courses for you to get your license. They don't have a course there anymore, but it is still a weekend course. It's a three-day course. There's a college, I believe it's UC San Diego that offers the program at this moment. I can't remember if it's UC San Diego or UC Irvine. It's somewhere in Orange County or Southern California that offers a short weekend program now. Yeah, I was looking it up and I think there's a school of bone of dense cytometry at the University of California in San Diego. Yes, so yes, it, it does exist. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, they had another one in Orange at a college in Orange, but um, I don't know that it's still available. But like I said, it is a very short weekend course. And when I went to the course I went to, I didn't need a background in anything. I didn't need an associate's degree. I didn't need the other x-ray license. There's no prereqs for the course. It's a huge plus. The person I actually learned from was actually a a kindergartner teacher. She went from being a kindergartner teacher to being a uh, I'll just say DEXA tech. That might be a little bit easier. There you go. (laughs) That might be easier. So what are the requirements and what, you know, how long is the schooling for the um, DEXA tech? Uh, There are no requirements. When I went to school, there were no prereqs, no requirements. Um, It's a very short weekend course. It's three days. That includes scanning patients, background on the career, and then they set you up with a class to finalize to send off to the state so you can get your state certification or apply for state certification. And you do that on the third day? Uh, Yes, correct. Um, You have to, over the weekend, you have to scan so many patients as proof that you're, you're, you're learning the trade. Yes. Um, So that's, that's considered like your clinical hours, right? That's your clinical hours. Clinical hours. Um, You have to scan. I I thought it was like a minimum of 30 scans. I could be wrong. And then they have you do a test at the end of the course to make sure that you're prepared And once you pass that, they forward your scans that you've done as well as the test scoring off to the state of California. And the state of California will contact you to set up your state certification testing. Is the state testing done through a proctor? Like we have to go to a testing center or is it done there at the school? It's done through the state. So they send you to um, different state testing locations. I did mine in Mission Viejo. You just have to wait for the state to send you the approval to do the exam. Got it. My question's more towards like the testing. Are you someone that t- tests well or do, are you someone that you would consider like test anxiety? I did have some test anxiety. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I do. However, the course really, they really prepared you for a lot. Me having a background in radiology really helped. Uh, However, the course, even though it's a short course and it's a lot to learn in three days, it it really helped prepare me for the exam. Right. In relation to the testing is you seem to have always had an interest in the sciences. I know when you and I spoke, you said that biology was always that interest. So does someone in your in your opinion, did the testing help that you had that kind of interest already? Or do you think if somebody was just this newfound love for biology do you think they would be able to understand it and be able to really engage in this field? I believe somebody who had an interest in biology would be able to have good interest in this and be, do well on the exam. Um, there is a lot of math involved um, mm. in the testing. It doesn't necessarily pertain to you know everyday practices, but that is something that is on the testing that that can kind of throw a curveball and you know deter people. But it's 
it's it's still it's good to have or an interest in biology at least to help you through the course. It, it I think it helped. Right. And I think that, that, you know, we always talk about, at least when I'm advising a student that's interested in the sciences, I always tend to pair math. So this gives me another, you know, kind of uh, point to prove <laughs> that they it really right. does right. seem to be part and parcel sometimes, especially if you're getting into the field like yours that does have some advancements and it probably will be tied to, to math. How much of it do you think is also tied to technology? Quite a bit, actually. Um it's x-ray so and the machine itself is all digital there's no like you know old x-rays where you know you have to put it in a solution stuff like that it's a lot it's very computer oriented it's it's pretty neat as far as technology goes How does this better suit your lifestyle, you know, versus what you previously considered like a traditional career path? That's a good question. Um, I like working with people is what I'd say. The career itself is pretty one person oriented. Like Brenda came in, you know, you're focused on one thing throughout the day and it's the scanning. You get to see a lot of different things. I mean, you don't get to see the same thing over and over again. You deal with a lot of different uh, demographics. You deal with a lot of different situations. It's, I like it. I I think it pairs well with my life. And I work part time, to be honest. So that's a huge plus. Um, not every not every position is part time, but I do like where I'm at. And I think it works well with not having to deal with trauma, I guess is what I'd say is it better suits me myself. I just don't think I would handle that very well or blood anyways. <laughs> Do you find something really exciting or promising about your field? The advancements that you get to see throughout time. This technology is fairly new. People that are much older, you know, they didn't have these type of exams available, you know, say 15, 20 years ago. It wasn't as well known as it is now. And as time's going on, technology is always advancing and that's always helping. Um, The newer machines do a lot more than just you know, scan for osteoporosis. They also scan for body fat composition and other things as well. Right. So a typical day for you would be scanning and then producing the reports that doctors are eventually reading? Correct. Yes. Um, Every scan consists where I am is scanning the hip and the lumbar spine. Um, We also generate a report with it's like a Word document that breaks down the information from the actual scan into a, a layman's term report for you to see where you are as far as on the scale of having bone loss. There's, you know, normal bone loss and then there's moderate and there's severe. Moderate is considered osteopenia. That's like the gray area right before you get to severe, which is osteoporosis. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that must be nice to be able to be part of identifying the different things that might somebody might have to consider as they, you know, as they're considering for their health, but not necessarily having the responsibility of a doctor level, you know, like an MD level type of um, commitment, right? Right, correct, yes. Desiree, do you feel that there's a need for more bone densitometrists? Like, do you see that there's going to be more awareness of this field? Or do you feel that there should be a more awareness of this field? I I believe so. That's my personal opinion. Um, They're finding a lot of things, a lot of things they consider risk factors are linked to osteoporosis, things such as cancers, different medications with cancers. As all these things go on, there's going to be more need for screening. So I I believe it's going to advance and that there could be more room for more technologists in the future. And so just for those of us out who aren't necessarily um, in the field, how does this compare to a typical x-ray? Why is it that a bone densitometrist is needed? And how is it compared to like an x-ray technologist? What information can you gather from a bone density exam that differentiates it from an x-ray? So with a bone density, they're screening specific areas. They're screening the area, the neck of the femur and the spine. Um, this test is generated to specifically look for bone loss. Um, Whereas a regular x-ray is more diagnostic where it's looking more like for a fracture or arthritis or narrowing of a joint. Um, This test is a little 
little bit more invasive than that, not as in regards to the patient, but the analysis. It's showing where the bone loss is and how severe that area is, rather than just a regular plain x-ray where it's just, you can pick up osteoporosis on, I've had people tell me that their dentist has told them, oh, you know, your teeth show that you have bone loss in your jaw, and that's why they're recommended to come in. But this exam actually analyzes the areas that in the field of bone density we look at to see how severe the bone loss is, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, Desiree, I learned a lot from this conversation and others that we've had just about in general, even this that one piece that you just mentioned about a dentist being able to talk about the bone density, it makes sense, right? Your your teeth are part of that, you know, the, the bigger picture, right? But we don't seem to think of it in terms of our profession, just like you've broken it down for me. Right, right. Not every x-ray is going to pick that up, or they're not going to be able to detect it on every x-ray, but there are instances where they're able to see severe bone loss. And that's why sometimes people are recommended for those reasons. But mainly the exam is done as a screening exam, uh, mainly in our field. Bone density is not as common as other professions out in the medical field. So if somebody had asked me if I wanted to do it, I would just kind of look at them like, I don't even know what that is. (laughs) Um, I I wouldn't really be able to (laughs) concept what they were talking about. But now that I have a background in radiology, I think that persuaded me some more than than not knowing anything about it or somebody just approaching me in high school about it. I appreciate you saying that, Desiree, because we might have some listeners that are in high school or they're finished high school and are still trying to figure out what the next steps are. And this would be, I like the way you just said that because this would be a great way for them to either move forward or at least stop and think maybe this is something that I would like to pursue. Right. Same thing with uh, medical assisting. I didn't think going to school that I would pursue that as well. Uh, That was part of my first license. That was part of what I was trained to do. But like I said, anything in the medical field, I feel like is better as far as job security. And it's always evolving. So it's, it's a nice profession to have. How many licenses do you have, Desiree? Currently, I have two. I have the plain, well, they consider it x-ray license. And then I have the uh, DEXA technologist license. So you have certifications that you don't necessarily have licenses for, correct? Right, correct. For the medical assisting, I did learn to do phlebotomy, but I never pursued it for certification. Because like I said, I don't think I'm I'm good with (laughs) it. No blood, no blood. (laughs) Yes. I got you, girl. I got you. No blood. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I originally wanted to do what Brenda does. I wanted to be a sonographer, oh. but that looked pretty interesting because same thing with radiology. You're looking at different areas. You're not just focusing on one thing. You get to see a lot of different things. But with x-ray, you get to see different parts of bones. You get to see fractures. You get to see – it's just interesting to me. Yes. Right. It's black and it's white. Trying. It's like you're looking at white noise, but you got to differentiate exactly. what it is. But you're right. It's, exactly. it's, it's a cool feel that you can, it changes every day. You see different things every day. Right. Yeah, that's, right. that's super cool to listen to you because you can tell you have genuine interest and, and that I feel you, you're going to get far in this particular career or another one if you use this one as a stepping stone as you move forward professionally. Right. That's, I mean, that's what's important. That's what I've tried to do throughout my entire career. I want to continue advancing. And that's what's good about the medical field. You're going to continue to learn things and you're going to want to pursue other areas. It's not so limited to where you're just focusing on one aspect of it. There's so many different venues or different areas of interest that you can follow up with. So one last um, question before we wrap this up, Desiree. And if you were to think about giving a piece of advice to our listeners What do you think it would be as you now are in a position where you obviously love what you do and looking forward, you see a promising future? Pursue what makes you the happiest. Anything, like I said, anything in the medical field would be great. Pursue what makes you happy, though. I wish somebody had told me that, you know, radiology was like a great option or that even that bone density existed because at the time nobody did. Explore all your avenues. Don't just stick to one thing. What would be the most important things you'd want people to know to be prepared for it before they pursue this career? The course itself can be kind of demanding with somebody without a background in radiology. If this is something you are interested in, 
study up on it before you join the course. It can be somewhat, I had other people in my course who didn't know anything about it and they were a little bit overwhelmed at first, but just do your research before you, you jump in. And I promise it's worth it. I, I love what I do personally. Everybody's different, but I love what I do. You get to meet a lot of different people. Um, you get to see a lot of different things and I enjoy it thoroughly. So I, I highly recommend it myself. Thank you so much. Thank you for considering me. Thank you for letting us probe into your professional life. Um, Brenda, thanks for joining me at the table and for tag teaming on this one. Of course. Uh, stay tuned for more insider career conversations that showcase career paths within the allied health sector. I appreciate you listening and I look forward to next time. Insider Career Conversations is a production of Juarez Consulting. For more information, you can visit JuarezConsultingInc.com. This episode was produced by Silvia Juarez Magana, with production help and editing by Casmara Hall.